All righty. Well, again, welcome everybody. Uh, we will jump right into it just to be mindful of everybody's time. Um, I do want to introduce Emily quickly, just so you all kind of know her background, and then I will let her kind of take it. Um, she is going to do a short presentation at the beginning, and then we'll leave plenty of time at the end for questions. Um, but if you guys do have questions that are pertinent to, you know, what she's talking about at that moment, um, go ahead and, and put those in the chat. Um, if not, then you can ask the questions at the end as well. Um, but we have Emily here this morning. She was a communications major um, from Red Bank, New Jersey, who always had a lot of passion for sports growing up. While she was at Clemson, she was able to combine her love of sports and production and get a true outside of the classroom experience. Um, Emily's first production experience was as a UPIC internship for the university's video services department. Um, she then gained another position on campus working for the athletic video services department as a camera operator for um, baseball, men's and women's basketball, and also soccer. Her junior year, she heard of an opportunity at the Career Center to become a CAP, um, which is our Career Ambassador Program, and wanted to expand her skills beyond production by helping fellow students and colleagues um, in their career exploration process. And post-grad, Emily has worked at NFL Films and is currently at NBC Sports working on Thursday Night Football. Um, so that's a little bit of background information on Emily, but thanks Emily for being with us here today. And I am going to share my screen real quick and pull up her presentation and we can get started. So I'll throw it over to you, Emily. Well, I never use Zoom and I know that's all you guys use. So let me figure this out. Good. <laughs> um, okay, great. So hi guys. Um, I'm Emily. Today I'm going to be talking about how to build connections in your field and network for potential job opportunities. For me, I'm more of a conversation person. So if you guys have a question as I'm going through, like, as Brittany just said, like, I don't know what you do here if you raise your hand on Zoom, uh, but you can just ask a question. Um, I, I'm all for conversations opposed to me just talking to you guys. Um, I want you guys to gain something out of this. Or if you, if you take one thing from this, then it, it's a win. So, um, all right, we can flip the slide. So as you guys just heard, uh, Emily Winter, um, wanted to dive into a little bit of background. Um, I know Clemson can be heavy on engineering and business, but I think some of the stuff that I'm gonna go over for the next 30 or so minutes can be used in any major and helpful in any major regardless. So some of the experience that I had, as Brittany said, I was a UPIC intern for Clemson Video Services, which came from a networking opportunity. Um, then I went into Clemson Athletic Video Services, which I met through someone from the Video Services Department. So that was a network opportunity. Uh, the Career Ambassador, I will get into in the next slide how I heard about that. Um, but my summer leading into my senior year, I was an intern at NFL Films. I guess I did a great job because they ended up calling me back and gave me a job uh, for after graduation. So I guess I did something right. And graduating with a job is a huge plus. So I'd highly recommend it. Uh, and then getting to where I am today, um, NBC Sports. I've been here since March, 2020. Um, I've worked on Sunday Night Football, Super Bowl that we just had in February, the Paralympics, hockey, just finished the Triple Crown uh, in Ju July, and Thursday Night Football. So Thursday Night Football kicked off in Kansas City. So these photos on the right from the past couple of weeks. Um, so I'm on a plane every Tuesday and Friday. So please excuse me if I sound a little tired. Um, it's been a lot of traveling. So we can flip to the next slide. So how I got involved with the Career Center. So I would always go in for drop-ins for resume help, um, interview help, and just, I didn't know how to look for a job at all. Um, so I went in one day for the drop-in sessions, really liked it, had a really positive experience, would recommend. Um, but the way I became a career ambassador, I lived in Lightsey Bridge my sophomore year. And I remember my roommate and I saw a flyer and it said, uh, if you come to this, you can win an iPad. And we're like, oh, we have nothing else to do on a Tuesday night. Let's go win an iPad. Um, and then it was all about like interview preparation because my roommate was an engineer and she was getting ready for the career fair. And on the last slide, her name was Laura. She was presenting. Um, it came up like, oh, if you want to become a career ambassador and help fellow students with, you know, resume, interview help, job searching, like come interview with us. So I interviewed with Heather. Uh, 
got the job and I was there until I graduated. So it was a super positive experience. I'd recommend to any of you to be look into the career ambassador program. It's pretty fulfilling to help fellow students, but also makes your skills stronger. Um, so we can go ahead and flip the slide. So today I'm gonna kind of talk about my experience on what worked in regards to networking and building connections. Um, they're more so like helpful tips, what to do and what not to do, but anyone you ask, you're gonna get different answers. Um, but for me, these were important things to consider. So one of my mentors um, while I was at Clemson actually sat me down and said, uh, I didn't know we were having a conversation, but they said, what do you wanna do right now? Like if you could pick a job after graduation, what would it be? And I didn't have an answer. I, I couldn't put what I wanted in the job title. So we sat down and I did a lot of self-reflection and what truly was my dream job. So that I would encourage you guys to have that be your first step. Like upon, you know, May 2024, like what do you want to do? What do you want to wake up every day doing? And, you know, what are you going to be good at? So then I went on to evaluate my on-campus and internship experiences, as you just saw on the previous slide. Um, I wrote down a sheet of paper, things I liked and things I didn't like. And that's one of the biggest things from an internship. You also learn what you don't like. I had plenty of jobs in high school and college that I did not like. They are not on that previous slide, um, but I learned, you know, it's just as important to think to learn the things you didn't like as well as what you like. So I circled the things I liked and I said, okay, I need to find a job description that fits all of these. And it turned out to be a producer. So I said, okay, I know I, I wanna be a producer now. So how do I get there? And I was sitting with my mentor. Um, your mentor doesn't necessarily have to be your boss, but mine was, it can be a fam family friend, a friend's parent, who has your dream job, a professor. I had some awesome professors while at Clemson um, or someone in the field that you trust. So I'd encourage you to get, to get a mentor, discuss your goals with them. It can only help. Um, then I began to research a lot of people with my dream job. And I spent a lot, way too much time on LinkedIn. Um, I'll reiterate this a lot, but research is probably the most important thing that you can do in regards to networking and connecting with people because it can make or break it. Um, I reached out to about four people for an informational interview, which I'll get to what that is in a second. Um, three of them never responded. And of those three, one of them actually is now my mentor at, and she was from NFL Films. So it's weird how things can become full circle, but the lesson from that was if they don't respond, don't let that defeat you because you could be their coworker one day. It just, they're probably, if, if you're reaching out to me, I'm probably on a plane, you know, I'm going to Denver tomorrow. I'm, I can't check my phone, um, but don't let that defeat you. You know, try to keep in touch with these people um, if you can. Um, the last thing that worked for me was timing. So if you're reaching out in September, for a summer internship. I know like some like investment banking, like you need to work well in advance to get that internship, but learn what's standard for your industry because maybe reaching out in September, if you think the conversation can come up about opportunities for internships or jobs, it may not be appropriate to reach out that early because there's no action that can come from it. If that, does that make sense, everyone? I know I can only see a few of your faces, but okay. And are there any questions? Am I flying through this? How am I doing? Is everything good? <laughs> We're good? All right. No cool. questions in the chat so far, but okay. I, I it's a no small enough, it yeah. It's a small enough group. If you guys just want to put a question in the chat or just unmute yourself. Or say Emily, slow down. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> You're good. Um, okay. So some general tips for networking. Use the career center resources. Like I mentioned earlier, the drop-in sessions are huge. Like, do you, Brittany, do you guys still have job link or is it handshake or? Still job link. Okay. So yeah, go in for a drop-in session, learn what job link is. I didn't know until I started working there what it was. Um, very, very helpful. Um, you can filter out things that are not related to you at all. You can find things that are good for the summer, um, the winter, whatever it may be. So use it while you have it because I miss it. Um, and also we have a huge alumni network. I'm in New York City right now. Um, I'm from New Jersey. You're probably gonna hear a siren go by in a little bit, but um, I was walking on the street, 
put the Clemson hat the other day and I ran to someone, you know, that graduated in 2013. So the alumni network is huge. The Clemson family is strong all around the United States. So use that to your advantage as well. Um, and you can also join like on LinkedIn, if you join the alumni group and if you go to like, I don't know, let's just say ESPN for an example, it'll say, oh, three alumni work at this location or Clemson alumni work at this location. You can see who they are. And then that could be another way that you could reach out. So use your Clemson family, uh, they're there for you. Um, family and friends, if someone's parent has your dream job, don't be afraid to say, hi, could we talk on the phone for 15 minutes? Or, you know, if they're in the neighborhood, like, could we go grab a cup of coffee so I can hear more about your job? The worst they can say, no, it's the worst they can say, you just move on. Um, but use those resources as well. Classroom opportunities. So the first job I got on Clemson's campus, the Clemson Video Services. So we made a lot of videos for social media, anything on the Clemson University, like Instagram account posted, uh, any like, documentary for the history department or the art department we did. Um, I actually got that job because I was taking an Adobe video class. I don't know if they still offer those, but my professor saw, I guess I had some sort of talent and then he asked me to become his UPIC intern. So always, you know, do well in class as well. And some professors do have UPIC internship opportunities. So make sure you're establishing a relationship with your professors as well. Research, can't stress this enough. Um, if you're gonna reach out to someone, make sure you know their job experience, where they've been before their current job, uh, where they went to school. You may see, uh, you know, oh, I'm from the same town as them, or oh, they're also from New Jersey. Anything that you can do to establish some common ground, um, it can help the conversation get off on the right foot. You may not have something in common with them, but just do your research. See if you know someone mutually. Um, so you can say, oh, hey, I, you know, I looked at your LinkedIn. I saw you worked at NBC Sports for three years. You know, my cousin works there, something like that, just to try to get the conversation going. Um, I saw chat thing pull up. Yeah, you mentioned um, Tiger Link, which I don't know if that was around Emily when you were here, if it was just I don't so think so. Um, but just if you don't mind me mentioning. Yeah, real absolutely. Quick. Um, so if you guys are interested in connecting with alumni, obviously you can connect, connect with alumni on LinkedIn. Clemson also has Tiger Link, which is kind of like Clemson's own LinkedIn. Um, and the reason to use it is um, typically alumni that are on there are on there just to help students. I know sometimes with LinkedIn, you're like, I don't really know if I should reach out to this person. What if they, you know, like I might say, like, what if they don't get back to me or what if they're not on here to really network? They just have a profile. I will say Tiger Lake does seem to be more people um, that are more willing to help. That's kind of why they're on there is to, to mentor or um, just answer questions from students or things like that. So if you guys have not been on Tiger Link before, um, that would be a good place to also look. Um, and then Emily, there is a question. Um, would you recommend cold calling slash emailing production companies to build connection or to learn more about the job opportunities? My gut reaction says, why not? You don't know how it can go. Um, my, I'll get to this later, but always have a resume ready if you're going to say that, because they're probably going to say, oh, you can just send your resume to xyz at gmail.com. Um, and you don't want to be caught in like an awkward, like, oh, okay, let me go to the career center and throw it together right. really quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, I say, why not? It's, yeah. If you have no connections, if you, if you have known no one, um, the worst they can say is no. That's kind of my motto, so. Okay, let me close this chat. So we just went over research, um, thoughtful messages. So I'll get into the don'ts later, which are probably gonna be helpful for you guys, but putting together a thoughtful message is really important. If you come across just asking for a job without getting to know someone, they're most likely not going to respond. So have a nice introduction, who you are, what you'd like to gain out of a conversation. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit later, but don't just come out asking for a job or an internship. Uh, come with questions. I always try, so even if I'm networking with someone new at NBC Sports, like, cause I haven't met a lot of my coworkers, unfortunately, cause I started in March, 2020. Um, so now we're all in the office now. So I'll be like, hey, can you meet up for 15 minutes just to, so I can introduce myself. 
And sometimes, you know, they don't have anything to say because I'm the one who set up the meeting. So I always came with four to five questions that can, that are not yes or no questions that can lead a conversation. It can be about their experience, can be about advice, um, just whatever you think is appropriate with that person. Um, last thing, take notes. If you're on video, like on Zoom or something with a person and they take the time out of their day, or if you go to meet up with them and get coffee or something, bring a notepad and a pen. It just shows that you care. Uh, okay, we can flip the slide. So in person and virtual, I know you guys have unfortunately been dealing with this. I'm sorry, I graduated in 2019. I don't know what it's like to learn um, on Zoom, but if it's someone on Clemson's campus, like a professor or you know a boss or a colleague, I think a local meetup is totally appropriate. They can understand really like some some communication can get lost over the phone. Um, but if it's, you know, if you're talking to someone, if I'm in New York and you're talking to someone in California, I'd say, hi, can you just talk on the phone for 15 minutes? Maybe if we establish like a relationship, then we can move on to Zoom. It's kind of like dating. Um, but just choose what you think is the most appropriate. Use your best judgment. Uh, okay, we can flip. So informational interviews. So as I said, research, you should know everything that's on their LinkedIn page. Um, pro tip, if you look at someone's LinkedIn page, they will get a notification. So don't view it like 50 times because I have gotten people that have done that before and I just get a notification every single time. Um, you can, I would recommend when you're in the thick of like job hunting, you can get a, I believe it's like a six month LinkedIn pro account where it doesn't tell you that you viewed other people's profiles. Sometimes I want a person to know that I'm looking at their profile. Um, so they know I'm doing my research, but if you're looking at midnight, the night before you talk to this person, consider that a free subscription. Um, or I would, you know, can also, you can also have someone else look at it that has no relationship to you, someone that you went to college with, um, and they can just take a screenshot. But yeah, every time you view their profile, they will get a notification. So just keep that in mind. Um, some people learn that the hard way. Um, it's the best method of connecting. We just went over that, whether it's Zoom, phone call, in person, use your best judgment. Come with questions. As I just said in the previous slide, four to five, I think is totally appropriate. Uh, ask for advice. I started doing this towards the end of my networking and I found that it was super helpful. Um, you know, I would say, hey, if you were in my shoes and you're graduating in four months, like what would you be doing? Or if you could change anything about, you know, your job hunt experience, what would you do? Because a lot of these people have been in this industry for a while, depending on who you talk to, and they may have some really helpful um, advice. And that could also be one of your questions. Potential opportunities. I would not go into informational interviews expecting a job or an internship or an opportunity. Um, they are just having a conversation with you. That's what you asked for. But if they say, oh, why don't you send me, you know, your resume leading to my next bullet point, have a resume ready to go before you talk to someone. Um, maybe they'll say, hey, if you want to send it over, I could take a look at it, can forward it to HR. Um, that potential opportunity may be there, but that usually happens towards the end of the conversation. And you can always say, you know, I really enjoyed speaking with you today. You know, if there's any potential opportunities, internships or jobs, whatever you're looking for. Um, you know, I'd love to have another conversation about that. But regardless, like, I really appreciate your time, um, I think is a great way to work that. Uh, thank you letters. So I've gotten a few handwritten cards after speaking to Clemson students. It meant a lot. Um, but if you can't figure out someone's address, like business or personal, I think a thank you email a few hours later or the next day is uh, needed because they took a lot of time. But handwritten cards, even if you go in for a job interview, always follow up with a handwritten card because that's kind of getting lost um apparently is what someone once told me people aren't doing that as much so it can really set you apart as a candidate uh okay so what not to do not knowing their background um and these are all based on people who have reached out to me after i graduated i had someone reach out to me and ask me who i worked for and i'm like wait i thought you had reached out to me um, so know their background, know where they worked, know where they went to school. 
uh, not having answers for your career goals and aspirations. This can be kind of tough, but they may say like, okay, like, what do you want to do? What's, what's your goal in all of this? Have an answer for that. You don't need a two-year, five-year, and a 10-year goal, but just have some sort of direction so that they can help you. If you reach out to me and you're not really interested in production, if you say like you're interested in marketing or something, explain to me what exactly you want to do. Um, maybe I have someone that I could point you in the direction that could help you because I'm not a marketing person, but I have plenty of friends who are involved, you know, from Clemson or even in New York that could, you know, if we have a great conversation, I'd be happy to get their contact information over. Um, asking for a job in the intro message. So these are copy and pasted from my LinkedIn uh, inbox. Hi, Emily, I'm looking for internships. Could you help me out? I never responded. Um, hi, Emily, X gave me your contact information. That's good, establish like who our common um, person is. Would love to hear more about your job. Okay, sounds like they did research on what my job is. I am looking for internships. Personally, I would not include this line. Um, I would say, could we uh, set up an informational interview? Would love to hear more about your job. Um, looking forward to connecting with you, totally fun. To me, it's that I'm looking for internships. It's, oh, you just want a job as you speak to me. You don't want to get to know like what I do or anything. But that's just my take on it. Um, I didn't respond to either of these messages, <laughs> but because it's, it's also hard to vouch for someone that you don't know. If I'm going to email HR, it's very difficult to just, you know, send an email to HR and say, hey, you let this person interview or something like that. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, okay, we can switch it. I was gonna say quickly, this would be yeah. a good um, slide to like screenshot, take a picture with your phone. This is good info. So I'm gonna give people 10 seconds to do that real quick. Cause we, we get a lot of questions from students on this kind of stuff. And we do have, um, we have informational interview packets that you guys can read through that can help you prepare. This is also stuff we can talk with you about in a drop-in or appointment. Um, as well. So just, just know we can, we can help you with those things, but this would be, all this is helpful to remember when you're, you're trying to network with people. So this is kind of um, my last slide and I want to like launch into a conversation with questions, but overall use the campus resources while you're there. I know a lot of Clemson students that I graduated with that never stepped foot in the career center and regret it now because they didn't know about the career fair which I know just hap happened last week, right? They didn't know about JobLink. They didn't know that they could connect with their professors. And now they're trying to go back on 2019 connections. And it's like, you graduated, like Clemson family is always here to help you, but use it while you have it. Uh, research your dream job and people who have that job. As I said, they may not respond to you, but LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. Um, some people have like bullet points as if it's their resume and what they do on a daily basis. So you can see if that's something that interests you. If you don't get a response, try again. As I said, one of the people I reached out to ended up becoming one of my producers. And we had, once we became friends, um, I told them that they never responded to my message, but they said they never saw it, but I don't know if I believe them. Um, and then build confidence. The more you do these, like I hate presenting. I, I just am not, I, that's why I work behind, like behind the scenes. Um, build your confidence. Like the more you do it, the more you'll get comfortable with it. Um, and you'll just go up from there. And last thing, as I said previously, be able to identify your goals. Like, what do you want to get out of the conversation? What do you want to get out of a career? What do you want to do come May, 2024? Um, just have those answers ready for yourself. And also if anyone asks, it, it can only help. Um, and then we could go to the next slide. Okay, I see from Kelly Rose. Uh, I'll go ahead and take this presentation off so that we can see each other a little bit easier. How did you connect with your early mentors? So my early mentor was that professor who asked me to become a UPIC intern for him. And then um, there was someone else who also worked in that department that I just became very close with. And they had my back, I had their back as a student um, because I am representing them. Uh, I'm representing the university when I go out for a shoot or anything. Um, so it was all about establishing a relationship. They learned that they could trust me, um, I could trust them. 
and you kind of just go from there. Um, I, not every boss I had is a mentor. I will say that. And it doesn't have to be a boss. I, there are, you know, my dad's best friend worked in production. Uh, I consider him a mentor, someone I can call for advice. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, how do you go from innovation to need someone to be your mentor? Kind of like dating. Um, I'd keep up with them. Um, if you're, if they can't help you with a job or let's say they retired, let's say they um, are no longer working right now. I'd say if you keep up with them, you keep having phone conversations with them. If you're in the same town, have, you know, monthly check-ins. Um, and you can also ask someone like, would, would you be my mentor? Like, I think you could really help me in my career. You can, you can ask someone to be your mentor. Uh, you, you can define the relationship, if you will. Um, yeah, it's, it's all about just building it. Someone's not gonna be your mentor after a 50, 50 minute phone call. Um, just keep that in mind. Are there any other questions? Emily? Yep. Yeah, I have a question for you. Um, so let's say somebody is a first year, for example, I'm a first year PhD student this year. Wow. Um, but even an undergraduate student. So how would you maybe direct that person to developing long-term mentorships um, and long-term connections so that when they are done with their schooling, they have those connections? So you're saying like in, in your shoes right now? Oh, this sorry. So maybe talking to both. Sorry, could you repeat that again? Yeah, so either a first year PhD or graduate student or a first year undergraduate student. Yeah, how do you keep those relationships you're saying? Um, I say just stay in touch. There are some um, professors that like I have on Twitter who post um, some stuff and I'll like their tweets every once in a while. I'll, I'll email them updates. Um, I'll text, you know, some of my old bosses. Um, when Thursday Night Football started, like they were like, good, because Thursday Night Football just launched launched on Amazon Prime. So it was this huge, big deal. Um, so I was getting text messages. They were asking me, how's it going? Instead of like just texting back, I just called them. I was like, hey, here's what's going on. What's new with you? And I, I know you guys have the NC State coming up, college game days coming into town. Um, how are things How are things going? Um, I would just say constantly keeping in contact, giving people love updates. If you send someone an update on yourself, I feel like, like personally, I love to hear about growth um, and what people are doing beyond like, let's say I graduated and you know, you're still in your first year. I think it's so cool to see where people started and where they are now. So just keep in contact. That's what I'd say. Any, any questions from the hidden videos? Uh, how was your post-grad transition and what is the best advice for someone who will be graduating soon and entering the workforce? My post-grad transition, um, I was fortunate to have a job offer in November for May graduation, um, but I know that is not always the case. Um, I'd say if you're graduating in May, I'd say start now, um, start networking, go to the career fair that just happened. I think there's another one in the spring. Um, get your name out there. Um, if you want a cold call a production company or someone, go ahead, start the LinkedIn messages. Uh, you don't wanna start in April for a May graduation if you want a job in May. Um, the post-grad transition can be tough. Um, mine was kind of weird because it became 2020 and everything kind of shut down and sports stopped for a while. But as you can see, this country is pretty resilient and you guys are resilient to learn how to learn, learn how to learn on Zoom. So use that, you know, in, in interviews, people really respect what you guys went through the past couple of years. I could never do it. I could never learn, you know, math on a Zoom call. Um, I'd say use that as a strength when you talk to people, be like, hey, I just went through a lot learning on Zoom. I, if that doesn't prove I can do anything, then I don't know what does. Um, you guys have a really unique uh, background, so I'd say use that to your advantage. Um, I have a question about like becoming a mentor. Like, when do you think would be a good time um, 
like I'm a junior, but I don't know when it's a good time to like become a mentor and like help those younger than you and like what that process looks like. So what's like the, are they like a freshman or what's the, uh, what's, could you elaborate more on this? Oh yeah. Well, that's what I was kind of wondering. It's just like when in general is an appropriate time for me to consider myself like available to becoming a mentor to anyone younger than me, like on the same path as me. I don't have like a specific scenario. I've just been involved in like mentorship programs and I'm not sure when would be the right time for me to like give back. Um, I'll I'll just use a personal example. I was um, part of the TV network, the student TV network called Tiger Vision on campus. I was a senior. I was on my way out. There was freshmen coming in. Um, I was at the club fair, uh, you know, trying to explain to people my experience how, because Tiger Vision was the first like anything on Clemson's campus where I touched a camera. Um, but there were freshmen coming in, there was young girls coming in, um, and I felt like it was all guys, there was a lot of guys in our group, and I felt like a responsibility to help these young, young girls, and one of them is actually at NBC now with me, uh, I try to meet up with her for lunch every so often, give as much wisdom as I can at the age of 25, but I, I get your point, it's like this weird, like, oh, I'm still in college, I can't help, but if you have advice, like, you don't necessarily need to help them get a job, but even just advice helps, like things that you learned while at Clemson or through internships. Anything you can pass down, I think, is a form of mentorship. Um, does that answer your question? You can, yes, you can always help. You. you can always help. Um, yes, okay, that that makes sense, yeah, thank but you. But maybe, you, you know, if someone's a sophomore and you're a junior, you're like, oh, I'm their mentor. I don't think that really makes sense necessarily, but you can you can always help and share tips, tricks, advice, wisdom, I think is always fair game. Hey, Emily, my name is Elizabeth. And so I graduate in December and I'm going into the film industry and I have been working as a production assistant on film and TV sets over the summer. And I have a few more jobs lined up um, post-graduation and in the next few weeks, but I was kind of just wondering what do you think is the best trait to bring to a production Um, as a production assistant? assistant, um, Is there anything that I can do to like stand out or just help, you know, bring a positive experience to the set? Is there anything that I can do beforehand or a trait that I should bring? Definitely. Um, Someone once told me we can figure it out Mm -hmm. within two weeks. If you've got what it takes, always have questions ready. Um, if someone teaches you something, take notes because you don't want to keep going back to that person three times. Um, we're currently training other PAs right now. Um, I'd say learn it, do it in front of that person. And then before they ask for it the following time, have it ready. All right. I, I don't know what exactly you're doing on a day-to-day basis, but prove that you're self-sufficient would be my best advice. And you can set yourself apart. It'll take a little bit of time, which is prove you're reliable. Um, always show up on time. We have this thing called Lombardi time actually on our crew. So if a meeting's at two, you should be in your chair at 145. It's, it's, it's early, but um, that's just what Lombardi time is. But always show up, be there ready on time, be put, you know, have all your ducks in a row. Um, trying to think, that's a really good question though. Um, I'd say just prove yourself sufficient, reliable. I'd say, you know, if I'm going to ask someone for help, I want to make sure that they can get the job done. Uh, I don't, you don't want to take a chance, especially in live production. Everything's happening really quickly and you want the person to succeed and you want the team to succeed as well. Um, so be a team player, have each other's backs. Uh, it can be, it can be a tough industry at times. Um, but if you want to offline, I'd love to hear about what you got lined up. Um, and I, I think you're a Clemson grad, so you'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Good luck. Anybody else? Hi, Emily. My name is Campbell. I'm a current junior communication student. I'm looking to get more into production and things like that. The most experience I've had right now has been theater entertainment, working as a PA for some shows over the summer. And I know a lot of stage managers or production individuals in the entertainment industry work freelance. So I was wondering if you had any perspective on that within live TV and any like coworkers or just tips on working freelance in today's environment. 
is freelance what you want to do or what you're just trying to learn more about what it is? Just trying to learn more about the options available. Yeah. That so makes sense. I actually was freelance up until recently. Um, I just got a staff job and that's kind of how it goes in sports production, unfortunately. Um, so a lot of places will have freelance opportunities and essentially that just means you don't get um, health benefits, but you guys will have it till 26, I think, on your parents. So I had to um, prove myself at two different companies to get a staff job. Um, freelance is basically, you get like per diem, um, you're paid by the hour most likely or by the day. Uh, some people really like it because you can choose, pick and choose what jobs you do. I like stability and knowing I always have a paycheck every two weeks. Um, it just depends on what you want. Like there's a lot of camera operators I work with that can just, you know, go to Europe for a month because they just don't accept work or, you know, they book themselves every day, which can lead to burnout. Um, you just got to pick and choose what, what's best for your situation. Um, some people really love freelance. Some people like the staff job and the, the job security, but I mean, basically all the freelance people didn't have work March, 2020 when all the sports shut down. So those are things to consider. Um, but people with staff jobs, they were let go. Don't get me wrong, but there was just more job security there. Uh, so I would just evaluate your situation, what you want to get out of it. Um, but if a staff job is your goal, just know sometimes freelance, uh, is the way to get there, unfortunately. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Do we have any other questions? Emily, I have a maybe a quick question. If yeah. You know. um, I mean, I hope I I hope I've answered everyone's question. I don't yeah. know. I feel like I'm talking in circles sometimes. No, but. you are you are not. It's been great. Um, I know you mentioned um, like having to be, you know, the meeting starts at two, but like your office culture is like getting there at, at 145, which kind of yeah. made me start thinking of, we have a lot of students that, you know, start a full-time job and we've heard like, how do you, like, they don't really understand what the culture of the office is yet until you get there. So do you have any advice of like, how do you navigate that of like figuring out you know, you do have to be early to meetings or you need to bring a notepad with you or everybody brings their computer, kind of like those unspoken things that can yeah. happen. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you kind of navigated that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I did not know about the 15 minute rule until someone called me the day of and was like, cause I was just gonna join like, you know, two minutes before and hide my video until then. Um, someone happened to call and said, hey, do you know what Lombardi time is? And I was like, what are you talking about? I had no idea. They didn't have to call me. Um, so I'd say always show up to things on time, but also once you get to know, like, you know, I'm say, oh, hi, Brittany, like, I'm Emily, nice to meet you. Like, this, get into a conversation with someone and learn how things roll. Um, we have, there are some meetings where there's no phone, no laptops allowed. I did not know that until I started asking like, hey, what do you guys bring? to this meeting. Do you bring a notepad? Do you bring a computer, a phone? What's the deal? Some meetings you can have your computer open. Some meetings you can't. Um, always, so I'd say always just bring all three. Um, be prepared. Um, but the only way I was able to learn that was through asking people. So once you get settled, you know, say, what are the expectations? Or if you get hired, ask the manager, like, hey, what time am I expected in here? If they say nine, get there at 8.45 as you just start out. Um, you know, if, it, if you're done at five, stay till 5.15, you know, show that you care, um, especially as you're just starting out. But establish some relationships with your coworkers, I think, is the main way to figure out what the culture is. Yeah, that's a good point. And we tell students a lot too, even when they're in internships, like kind of figure out who you feel like you want to model your, your kind of work life you know, balance and just working after. So find somebody at the company that like, oh, you know, I really want to, you know, I see that they're modeling things well and kind of see how they're doing it and, and kind of yeah you know, same thing. So you're kind of hopefully doing things the right way, I guess, if, if that makes sense, but try to find somebody that you think is doing things well and kind of model your, your work after. Yeah. That. And as you're at a company longer too, like you'll figure out like, 
who the top students are. Um, and pro production can be weird. Production has really weird hours. Like I can work till 2 a.m. some days, like tomorrow I'm getting up at 5 a.m. Like production's unique. Um, but I'd say some people work better at night, but they've been at the company for 30 years. So they can come in at 4 p.m., but they're gonna be working till 2 a.m. So if you're just starting off, figure out what the status quo is. Um, go from there, establish you know, that you're reliable, self-sufficient, and that you get the work done. Um, but don't be, I, I'd say don't be like on your phone the whole time. Um, constantly look busy, even if you're not. I, I know how it can be sometimes, but um, always you know, set up meetings with people, say, hi, you know, I'm just started here. I'd love to set up a 15 minute conversation with you. That way, when you're walking the hallway, you can say hi and not like an awkward, like, how's it going? Like, you, you start to establish who you are in whatever building that you uh, go to after graduation. All right, we have one more question. Um, Emily, what's the best way to get in contact with you if the, any of these students have future questions? Yeah, just reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, my email is kind of tough because I'm traveling a lot and my phone, like I'm on a, also on a plane. So texting or calling is probably not the best way. LinkedIn, I'll see it. It may take me a little bit, um, but you know what not to do. But um, yeah, LinkedIn's the best way, Emily Winter. Uh, you could just type in Emily Winter Clemson and I think it comes up, so. Awesome, thank you. Well, thank you, Emily. And I'm gonna pop really quickly into the chat. Um, how to get in touch with the Career Center, if it'll let me. I'll go ahead and stop the recording. But thank you, Emily, for coming today. Um, and like you heard Emily say, if you have any questions or want to connect with her, look her up on LinkedIn. Um, but we really appreciate your time. Absolutely. You guys are all going to do 